In the modern world, trade has reached such a level that it was difficult to imagine it just recently. More and more people are buying goods online. They sell and buy everything from food to cars. In just 20 years of the new century, the number of different ships has increased hundreds of times, a huge number of container ships, tankers and bulk carriers have appeared. The entertainment and leisure industry has also reached a new level, huge cruise ships have appeared, which are becoming more and more every year, and each new one strives to become bigger and more luxurious. In this video, we will just look at all these very huge ships of different classes, from an aircraft carrier to a cruise ship or icebreaker. Today, shipping is the main global trading system, more than 90% of all cargo between countries on the planet is transported by water. Moreover, their volume is growing, which means that the demand for means of delivering as much cargo as possible in one flight is growing it is cheaper, more environmentally friendly and more efficient. Such vessels are divided according to the type of cargo into two large groups bulk carriers and tankers. The first transport, as you might guess from the name, dry cargo in bulk or in bulk, such ships are called bulk carriers, cargo in containers is transported by container ships. There are also universal vessels on which you can transport different types of cargo mixed. Tankers carry liquids or gases. The holds of tankers can be filled with oil, chemicals, or any other liquid. Until 2009, the Nock Nevis was the largest tanker in the world, today only its 36-ton anchor remains, which is stored in the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. This tanker had a difficult fate and many owners changed. The tanker was designed and built by a Japanese company in 1974 and has been modified several times in its history to increase its capacity. After the restructuring, the tanker had a displacement of 657,000 tons at full load, and the length was 458 meters. The speed of this colossus only developed up to 13 knots, and to stop the ship needed at least 10 kilometers, so when the tanker needed to be brought to the oil terminal, it was taken in tow and pulled very, very slowly. It is easy to imagine what can happen if a ship of this size is mistaken in maneuvering. It was these figures that became not only a plus, but also a minus of the giant. When fully loaded, the tanker sank almost 30 meters underwater. Due to its size, the tanker could not pass through the Suez and Panama canals, and it was also forbidden to pass through the English Channel, since there was a high probability of running aground. Its main route ran from the oil fields of the Middle East to the United States and back. However, the Iran-Iraq War made its own adjustments to the life of the tanker. Since 1986, the ship has been used as a floating terminal for the storage and further transshipment of Iranian oil. But this did not save the ship on May 14, 1988, an Iraqi fighter attacked her. The tanker received significant damage, an uncontrolled fire broke out on the ship, and the crew abandoned it. Three people died. The tanker ran aground near the Iranian island of Larik and was declared dead. After the Gulf War, a Norwegian company bought it, the tanker was raised and towed to Singapore, where repair and restoration work was carried out. After the adoption in 2004 of a ban on the entry of single-hull tankers into the ports of the United States and Europe, its career as a transport vessel ended. In Dubai, the giant was converted into a crude oil storage tanker and anchored in an offshore field off the coast of Qatar. In December 2009, the tanker made its last passage to the shores of India, where within a year its hull was cut into pieces. Today, among the largest tanker ships that can be found in the oceans are Korean tankers built in the early 2000s at the Dewoo shipyard. This corporation, like the other two of the Korean Big 3 Hyundai and Samsung is engaged not only in cars and household appliances, but also in shipbuilding. Four tankers were built which are intended for the transportation of crude oil from the countries of the Persian Gulf. The total length of the ship is 380 meters, and the width at its widest point is 68 meters. The tankers are painted white so that they do not heat up in the sun. Three of them do not go to sea today, but serve as coastal oil storage facilities.
No matter how huge and roomy supertankers are, they are not the longest. Here they are overtaken by 400-meter container ships, and several at once, since such ships are usually built according to one project in several copies. There are several competing projects in the world today. The newest of the giant container ships, CMACGM. She set out on her first commercial voyage in early February 2018. The closest competitor of this container ship is the MSC vessel manufactured by Samsung Heavy Industries. The vessel is 400 meters long and is the first container ship in the world to accommodate 24 rows of containers in width, increasing its capacity. To better understand the speed at which container ships and trade in the world are evolving, it is worth mentioning that in 2005 the record holder container ship was half the size of modern ones. The use of containers greatly simplifies the transportation of goods by sea, and also reduces the cost of transportation. And this is how most of the goods are delivered from Asia to Europe and America. But despite their large size, the mass of cargo carried by container ships is half that of tankers, because the average density of cargo in containers is lower than that of oil in tankers. Since 2011, the largest bulk carriers in terms of both length and capacity, that is, ships designed to carry dry cargo, have been Vail Max class ships. Most of them are also built in Korea. They are called so because they were built to transport iron or mined by the Brazilian company Vail in South America to Europe and Asia, mainly to China. And this is exactly the case when it would be possible to build a larger ship, but it would not enter Chinese ports. The ship is 362 meters long, 65 meters wide, and can take 400,000 tons of cargo. Such ships do not go fast only 15 knots. But such a bulk carrier does not need speed its task is to go from port to port with the lowest fuel costs. He also does not need a large crew, much is automated on a modern merchant ship, and a team of 20 to 30 people is enough. A fully loaded ship can enter only two ports in the world at the Ponta de Madeira terminal in Brazil and at the Europort near Rotterdam in the Netherlands and only at high tide. The ship makes 10 voyages between these ports a year with a cargo of iron ore. In addition to mass or at least serial tankers, bulk carriers, and container ships, there are also unique vessels that perform special tasks, for example, the transportation of non-standard bulky cargo. These are semi-submersible vessels with a huge carrying capacity, designed to move non-format objects, for example, other ships and offshore platforms. The most lifting vessel today is the Dockwise Vanguard, which is capable of carrying objects weighing up to 110,000 tons, which is about 11 Eiffel Towers. Such vessels have special ballast tanks and can, having taken water in them, dive deeply, while remaining afloat. If they need to transport, say, a damaged ship, they go under it, then pump water out of the ballast tanks and float up. The largest nuclear-powered icebreaker is a new Russian giant called Arktika, whose first voyage took place in 2020. Its construction began in 2013, in 2016 the reactors were installed and the icebreaker was launched. Since the icebreaker was not yet 100% ready at that time, the title of the largest icebreaker was held by another Russian giant called 50 Years of Victory, and today the second largest in the world. The construction of this icebreaker began in 1989, and only in 2007 did it go on its first voyage for testing, and on July 30, 2013, the icebreaker reached the North Pole, this was the 100th visit to the pole by a surface vessel. The estimated maximum ice thickness that the icebreaker must overcome is 2.8 m. In addition to its main task of escorting merchant ships through the ice, the icebreaker has recently also been moonlighting as a cruise ship, now anyone who wants to pay some thirty to $40,000 can visit North Pole. In such a cruise, a restaurant, a gym, a sauna, a swimming pool, a library and a music salon are on board for tourists. There is also a satellite TV system for those who have forgotten their tablet with TV shows at home. The largest aircraft carrier in the world belongs to the United States, its name is Gerald Ford CVN-78 in honor of the 38th U.S. President Gerald Ford. 
Its construction began on August 11, 2005, and it was launched on November 9, 2013. It entered service on May 31, 2017, replacing the previous record holder called USS Enterprise, which has been plying the waters since 1961 and which ended its 51-year service in December 2012. The new aircraft carrier has a displacement of 98,000 tons, which is 20% more than the previous record holder. The size of the ship is 337 meters long, 78 meters wide, and 76 meters high. To make it clearer, this is a 35-story building, the size of three football fields. The operation of the new vessel is projected to be cheaper than the Enterprise due to the reduction in the number of crew. A modern aircraft carrier can accommodate about 4,500 people. The aviation group consists of 90 aircraft, helicopters, and drones. Well, how can the top about the largest ships do without a cruise liner? The largest cruise ship in the world is called the Symphony of the Seas, it belongs to Royal Caribbean and set off on its first trip in April 2018, its first summer the liner plowed the waters of the Mediterranean Sea, and after it, the Eastern and Western Caribbean were appointed as the place of permanent navigation. A tourist liner can be called a small sea town. It is capable of taking on board 5,500 travelers. They are located in 2775 cabins. Passengers have the opportunity to walk along the 16 decks of the cruise ship. Just imagine the scale of this cruise liner, its length is 362 meters, while the Eiffel Tower is 324 meters, and the infamous Titanic was only 291 meters. Friends, write your comments on which of the ships surprised you the most, and we will prepare a new issue about it. Please support the video with likes, your support is very important to us. Well, that's all for today, thank you all for watching, if it was interesting, support the video with likes, thank you for subscribing, and take a look at what else we have prepared for you.